does it mean to break the build? My name is Joe. You may know me from such episodes as Tabs vs. Spaces, where I'm pretty sure we determined that Tabs were the better choice. I will be your temporary host today as we look into what it means to break the build. Hey, excuse me. Brenton asked me to host the show, but you can help if you want. Whatever. Hi, my name is Jane, and today we have an exciting episode in store for you as we delve into the world of continuous integration and build servers and learn what it means to break the build. I already said that. I said it was style. So buckle up and make sure you have your astronaut helmets on because apparently today's episode might be a little bit spacey. Is that a jab at me at using spaces instead of tabs? Because I'll have you know that spaces are much better Welcome back to Breaking the Build. I am your host, Jane. Co-host. Apparently, there were some questions about the name of the show, Breaking the Build. Because today, we get to talk about what it means to break the build. Those of you that have worked on development projects might already be familiar with the term breaking the build. But to best explain this, we need to talk about what continuous integration and build servers are and what role they play in development teams and projects. Continuous integration is the process of integrating the code from the different developers on the team automatically as they commit or check in their code changes. The build server will check to see if the developer's code meets the standards set by the team by running unit tests and checking it for linting issues. Such as if they try to commit code with tabs in it, when they're supposed to be using spaces. We thought it'd be great to interview some developers to get their thoughts and stories about breaking the build. To start us off, we're going to interview Brenton House, the guy that hosts this show sometimes. Brenton has some 25 years of experience in the development world, architecting, designing, and building APIs, and helping others do the same. He has also done a lot in the mobile development community in the past 10 years, and is currently leading the developer relations program at Axway. Welcome, Brenton. Well, thank you, Joe and Jane, for hosting this episode of the show. So where does the term breaking the build come from? Well, as you were discussing, if a developer commits code that breaks a test, it's said that they broke the build. Now, this can trigger some embarrassing events. Most often, an email will go out to everyone on the team that the change this person made is breaking the build. Now, some teams will go even further and have a dashboard that's displayed on television screens that shows the status of the build and kind of lets you know who broke it. Now, a few teams will go even further and have things like flashing lights to let everyone know that someone is breaking the build. So, what advice would you give to new developers about breaking the build? Well, obviously you need to test your code on your machine before committing it to the build server. But you know what? Everybody breaks the build at some point. It's not a career ending event, so just own up to it and figure out what went wrong so you can fix it and get the build working again. Most devs have a story to tell about the times that they've broken the build, no matter if they're junior or senior. One team I was on had a dunce hat that stayed on the desk of the last developer who broke the build, and I admit, it's probably on my desk more than once or twice. That sounds terrible. Thank you, Brenton, for being a guest on the show. We're so glad you could join us. Hey, it's pretty cool being a guest on Breaking the Build. Uh, but don't get too comfortable there, because I'm going to be back for the next episode. Hey, can you hear me? Hello? Looks like we lost him. Hey. Don't worry, we got this hosting thing down. I think he makes a better guest than a host anyways. We have some other guests lined up here, as we thought it would be nice to get some stories and advice from some other developers as well. For this, we went to Atlanta, Georgia, and got to talk to some developers at Connect Tech. So tell us your story. Have you ever broken the build? 
Okay, well first my name is Marcellus Haynes and I'm a front-end developer with the company called Agile Southwood Consulting Firm and just yesterday I broke the build. So in my situation I had uh, changes that are in two branches. We have multiple branches in our, uh, in our, pro in our development um, on our platform and so I was making changes in two different in two different branches and one had to go before the other. And so um, when we pushed the changes, well, the, the guy that was doing the changes forgot to push one of the branches and so we broke the whole app. Uh, and also what was happening is we had some linting errors, if you know what that is in JavaScript. And so, um, but it was, it was more so because the one package didn't find the other package because it had not, you know, successfully been built yet. So we had some, some uh, orchestration issues, but um, we were all sweating for a little while because we, in fact, had broken the build uh, because we didn't quite um, orchestrate our, our, our merges uh, correctly. So that's the story. Let's see who we have next. Have you ever broken the build? Yeah, I've broken a build. Um, basically, we had a, a build I was referencing a, a global package that wasn't on the build server, and it was a shared build server. So, yeah, definitely broke it. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Can you tell us if you have ever broken a build? Absolutely. Um, a few times. I can remember times where my specs are passing locally and everything looks good and then I go to ship it to production and the production build fails and I don't know why and I realize that there might be a time zone issue and so I pull down my PR again, I run my specs in the certain randomly chosen time zone of the build and it passes and so then I'm like well then what is happening, why is it failing in production? So then the only option is to maybe try to group my specs together in the same uh, bundle that the production is trying to randomly group specs together. And then if it still passes, I have no idea what I'm doing and I have to SSH, SSH into production while it's trying to build my specs and put binding.prize and try to figure out what's going on. So I definitely have learned a lot of um, debugging techniques and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But I think overall I've learned not to panic and that there's other people that have witnessed these kinds of issues before and so I ask a lot of questions, Google a lot of things. And at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if something fails. Uh, it's just hard the first time it happens to you. So try to stick in there and eventually get something to production eventually. <laughs> so tell us your story. Have you ever broken the bill? Absolutely, uh, all the time. Uh, you, every time you're going through something, you make a change and it can be drastic and you just don't know it. And just kind of keep moving and figure it out and fix those bugs. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're asking developers, have you ever broken the build? I have broken a build by deleting pretty much the entire application configuration. Um, luckily we had a backup of it, but it was down for a couple hours while we restored the entire configuration, so. Welcome to the show. Can you tell us if you have ever broken the build? Yeah, so when I was an engineer at Pinterest, we had this big mono repo and Everybody kept breaking the build and no one was taking responsibility. So I spun up a group of people willing to go on call during business hours to be the one that fixed the build when stuff went down, which is mostly just reverting your commit where you forgot to lint some stuff. So tell us your story. Have you ever broken the build? I have broken the build multiple times. Uh, I have been responsible for several things going wrong, but that's okay. Everyone does it. It is just part of development. If you are not taking risks that will break the build, you are not going to be making things that actually make meaningful changes for the people on the other side of the code. But it's been a pleasure hosting Breaking the Build, and I can't wait to be on another episode. Until next time, keep coding strong.